Thank you very much for your interest in this Earth Day virtual learning zone. My name is Brock Blevins, training coordinator for NASA's Applied Remote Sensing Training Program. RCEP provides online and in-person trainings on the application of Earth observations or remote sensing in a number of themes. That would be disasters, health and air quality, land management, water resources, and climate. These are open to anyone and everyone. We have people from all over the world attending our trainings. This ranges from those working in ministries and governments to local governments to academia, high school, up through university. These are live trainings and you're able to walk through data acquisition and see use cases of application and we invite you to find out more about all upcoming trainings on our webpage displayed here. All of our trainings are of no cost to the participants, as well as the NASA data that we feature. Our first demonstration will be by Amber McCollum. And this is from a training just this year called Using Earth Observations for Pre and Post Fire Monitoring. This demonstration features climate engine, and it surrounds the Lighten Creek fires in Canada from 2021. In this, Amber walks you through looking and analyzing and all the different capabilities of accessing NASA data through climate engine. And these data sets can be used by land managers, public health officials to monitor pre-fire conditions in their areas. All right, so for this first case study example, I mentioned we're gonna focus on the, the Lytton Creek fires in Canada. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, what you're seeing now is the Climate Engine main web page. Um, they've, they've just modified a, a few of these features here, um, but what we're gonna take a look at is their research application. So if you come right up to the top here and click on research app, you can learn a little bit more about the application and go to the app here. And what we're first going to do is um, focus in on our location. You can go in here and type in Lytton, Canada, and click on center map. And this will take you automatically to our region of interest. Along the top of the map, you have a lot of different uh, options for the features. Um, one of those is under map, you can change your base map. So you can go ahead and under base map, choose something like the roadmap. Um, sometimes that's a little easier to view. You have some different options here. I'll leave it up to you. Um, but now you can clearly see the town of Lytton here. Um, you get a little bit of an idea of the landscape surrounding the region. Um, and now what we're going to do is use this left-hand panel to um, select the variables of interest. Um, so we have the option here to make a map, which is what we're going to do. Um, you can also make a graph. We'll, we'll show a brief example of that later. Um, but here is where you really want to fine tune your variables of interest. So along the make map panel, um, you can go ahead and keep the type as climate and hydrology. The data set that we're going to take a look at is the NLDAS2 reanalysis. And when you click on the down arrow, you can see there are a lot of data sets available. So you have a lot of options here if you want to play around with this later. But we're going to look at NLDAS2. And we are going to take a look at the precipitation first. Um, so again, depending on the data set that you choose, you have different variables um, as your options. Um, under processing here, um, we're going to keep the total under the statistic. And for the calculation, we are going to take a look at the percent of average conditions. So go ahead and click that there. And then for the time period, you can select a custom date range, but it also has these pre-selected time periods. So things like the last June, July, August are really useful. And in particular for this example, because the fire happened um, in the, the last year. So then um, you can see the start and end date are automatically uh, modified to the last June, July, August. 
And because we are doing a percent of average calculation, um, this might take a while to process because what, what's going on behind the scenes is there is a climatological average established from 1979 to 2021. And then um, we're looking at the difference from average, the percent of average conditions in this example. So go ahead and click on get map layer and wait for the map to load. Okay, so now that the map has loaded, you can see that in this region, the precipitation is below average um, for, for the area. One great feature of Climate Engine is you have the option to get a value in a particular location. So you can click here on get value and because we selected Lytton as our um, zoom in area, um, the geomarker will be located directly over um, the town. So then we can click on show value and we can see what the precipitation uh, percent of average was for the last June, July, August in this region. So here you can see the precipitation was um, nearly 40% of average, so um, well below average. Um, the next thing we'll take a look at is the vegetation health. And we can do this by taking a look at um, some of our vegetation indices. Um, so again, we are going to um, use our panel here on the left. We are going to this time take a look at remote sensing data. So this is another option. Um, you see when I change remote the type to remote sensing, the data set here automatically changes to Landsat. What we're going to take a look at is Sentinel-2 in this example in Sentinel-2 surface reflectance. And we have our NDVI, which is the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, as our vegetation index selected. We're going to take a look at the uh, mean and the values. And for the time period, we're going to take a look at the last northern water year. And then click on Get Map Layer. Okay. So now you can see the NDVI value in this region. Um, you can see that much of the region has dense vegetation, um, in the, especially in the lower elevations along the waterways with less, de less vegetation along the um, mountain peaks. For our last demo, this is from a training called Satellite Observations and Tools for Fire Risk Detection and Analysis. This was part of the During Fire session of the training and you can see from the qr code that will take you to those training materials as well as the videos but i also have a link here that takes you directly to this demonstration its entirety by pawan gupta who is our air quality lead trainer for the rcep program this demonstration focuses on smoke plumes and fire detection in the western united states from some california fires in 2021 and in this, Pawan walks you through the navigation of the Worldview portal, which has over 900 data layers that can be used for a variety of applications. So now let's look at the, you know, some of these data sets which we talk, both true color images, uh, the smoke images, and some of the fire active fire detection data, the hotspot product. Uh, and how to access them. So we are going to use a NASA tool called NASA Worldview. The first link, it will show up as a NASA Worldview. I'll just click on that and it will take me to the home page of this tool. If you want to know about this tool, uh, I'll just briefly read the first paragraph so that you kind of understand what this tool is. So it's basically a tool uh, which where you can browse uh, near real time, full resolution satellite imageries and data layers. And also you can download some of these data. And there are about 900 different data layers available. So it's not limited to only fires or air quality in general. Uh, all aspect of Earth system, planet Earth, uh, are actually available, whether it's uh, disaster, precipitation, temperature, land use type, climate variables anything uh, so there are 900 different data layers 
and the one of the biggest uh, advantage of world view is that most of the information is available within two to three hours of its uh, satellites overpass on the bottom is a uh, date uh, control tablet tape uh, where you can actually change the date uh, this arrow will take you back and forth in days it will change by one day so i will change the date to september 2020 and let's say 11 that was the that was the image which we were looking earlier for the fires in western us now the most important part of this world view is this uh, left hand panel top right top left corner and there are three different tabs here layers events and data so the one which we are going to focus more on is called layers now in the layers when it by default there are two types of groups of layer one is called base layers in base layer we have four different satellite sensors uh, for which we have true color images so let's focus in uh, western us california washington and that part of the region that's where we are doing the case studies um, i have displayed the viewers image for september 19 uh, let's go to september 11 the image which we were looking earlier and you can see uh, so this is true color image you will see the clouds are appearing very bright white so you can easily identify them this is a land surface and this particular features uh, which is actually a uh, smoke plume transporting over ocean um, is really really thick smoke plume and now on the overlay uh, you have some uh, some of the legends, some layers like places name, which will allow you to navigate through the different parts of the world um, to identify where you are on the earth. And then there is a coastline and border. So if you want to see the borders in the state and countries, uh, this will allow you to do that. Okay, uh, now we are going to add some layers. So add layers. Once I click that, a pop-up window will appear and what it does is uh, it uh, separate those 900 data layers which i was telling earlier into different categories uh, and these categories are defined by disaster name hazard type or the science discipline for example atmosphere biosphere cryospheres or featured some of these featured stories so we are going to just stick to the first one hazard and disaster and since we are talking about the fires and air quality, we'll just stick to this particular window. Now in this, if you look, uh, there is a product which we were discussing earlier called fires and thermal anomalies. I'll click on that. Once you click on that, you will see several options here. So these are the different satellite. You remember we talked about two modis, two viewers. So these are the different satellite which you can select. Once you selected all those, make sure you have this uh, right sign and then you go on the top right corner, click that cross sign and just close that. All the layers which you have selected, they should appear on the overlay window here. We thank you very much for your attention. Happy Earth Day.